So the blood cells are also called what? Hematocytes. Okay. So a blood is formed of what? The blood is formed of, of a fluid portion, mm -hmm. and the fluid portion is what we call the plasma. Okay, we will see the difference between serum and plasma. And the cell part, the cell elements. Okay, so the plasma, plasma is a fluid portion. Is how many percent of the whole blood is plasma? Okay. 95. Eh? 95. No, no, no. I think that is. 70. Eh? 70. No, 55 percent is plasma, yes? And 45 percent are the blood cells. The blood cells are 45 percent. Then. Plasma is made up of water in how many percent? Maybe that is 95, 90 percent, okay? Of the whole is what? Like water, like 90 percent of this. 90 percent of the plasma, this one. And the rest will be proteins. Proteins like like albumin, globulin, which is alpha and beta globulins, alpha and beta globulins, and fibrinogen. Okay, and some other also proteins, but these are the most important ones. So which other organs are involved in the blood formation? Our liver, spleen, lymph nodes, all these are also involved in the uh, formation of blood in addition to the bone marrow. So blood cells are also made up of three different blood cells. What are they? These are erythrocytes. Mm -hmm. Leukocytes. And thrombocytes. Okay. So erythrocytes are the red blood cells. Leukocytes are the white blood cells. And thrombocytes are the platelets. Okay. Thrombocytes are platelets. So if you take the blood cells, so Usually erythrocytes, they contain what? Hemoglobin. That is, that is, it gives what? The red pigment. Red pigment of the 
of red blood cells. And hemoglobin is made up of what we call hemoglobin. It's made up of him plus globin. globin. Okay, so hemoglobin is made up of two, two things. And the heme is the one that contains what we call iron. Of course, it contains iron. So where the oxygen is and used to what? Used to, trans to transport oxygen. Okay, oxygen is being transported. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. Good? Everyone's doing well? Yes. Okay. Let's close the door here. And use that little jacket just a tad bit. So, leukocytes, they are used for what? For, as a defense mechanism, yes? for defense of the body. That means it defends from infection, from some kinds of diseases like cancers or infections, allergics, parasites, okay, all of these are defended by, by this. So, there are five kinds of leukocytes, what are they? Neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, and Lymphocytes. Okay. Neutrophils are the commonest and they are used for what? Usually for bacterial infection. When there are bacteria, neutrophils are the one. And eosinophils are usually for what? For allergic reactions. In case of asthma and so on. Lymphocytes usually are used for viral infections. Okay. Also, maybe I'm going to see it here. So this is on page 12. Also, eosinophils are used for parasites. And monocytes, usually they are changed to what we call macrophages. Macrophages. What do you mean macrophages? It's, it's almost a good question. It's, uh, inside the circulatory system. Yeah. They are the macrophages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are a large phagocytic cell found in stationary form in the tissues or as a mobile white blood cell, especially as a site of infection. Yeah. They, they, they defend or they remove infection or any bacteria, organisms, wow. any germ that's getting in. The macrophages are those that, that remove. There is what we call the endothelial uh, system and the reticular endothelial system. Reticulo endothelial system. There is what we call RES. RES, which means reticulo endothelial system. That means this, this system, it removes. It removes all the in the bacteria. What is the very rarely the monocyte we found in the blood. Huh? It's very rare we found it, the monocyte, yes, in or, the blood smear. Yes, yeah, the amount is very, very small. You can yeah. see it is 3 to 8 percent. Yeah. Basophils are the smallest, 0 0.5 to 1 percent. Basophil, 0 0.5 to 1. Eosinophil is the next. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this reticular endothelial system, it is the one that 
like spleen, lymph nodes, all of these are involved here in immunology. The mononuclear phagocyte system or mononuclear, you see, mono, like monocytes, okay, mononuclear phagocytic system, known as the reticulated system or macrophage system, is a part of the immune system that consists of the phagocytic cells located in reticular connective tissue. So these are the ones together with the the Im all immune system, they defend or they remove all the diseases from the, all the infections from the body. Let's say a little bit. Reticuloendothelial system, RES, and screen Dr. Nirvana Bayouni. Hematology lectures, reticuloendothelial system, RES, and spleen. Dr. Nirvana Bayouni. Objectives to find the term reticuloendothelial system, RES. Describe the cellular components of RES. Describe the functions of the RES. Define the structural function of the spleen. Describe the functions of the spleen. Understand the basic concept of the indication and risks of splenectomy. Lecture content reticuloendothelial system definition. Reticuloendothelial system components. Function of RES. Direct role in body protection. Indirect role in immune reaction. Spleen structure and functions. Splenectomy indication and risk. Reticuloendothelial system, RES, mononuclear phagocyte system. Reticuloendothelial system is an older term for the mononuclear phagocyte system. Most endothelial cells are not macrophages. The reticuloendothelial system, RES. It is a network of connective tissue fibers inhabited by phagocytic cells such as macrophages ready to attack and ingest microbes. RES is an essential component of the immune system. Cellular components of RES. Monocytes. Macrophage located in all tissues such as skin, histiocytes, liver, cupifer, spleen, bone marrow, lymph nodes, lung, endothelial cells. You can see all of these are the different macrophages that are found in different organs. Okay, so whenever there are problems in these organs, in skin, uh, liver, spleen, bone marrow, then there will be... Bone marrow, spleen, that. lymph node, macrophages, often remain fixed to their organs. They filter and destroy objects which are foreign to the body, such as bacteria, viruses. Some macrophages are mobile, and they can group together to become one big phagocytic cell in order to ingest larger foreign particles. Types of macrophages could be for cells, comma, dot, 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 in the liver. Macrophage differ depending on the organs in which they reside. Could be for cells, comma, dot, 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 in the liver. Microglia, in the brain. Reticular cells, comma, dot, 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 in the lymph nodes, bone marrow, spleen. Tissue is tyocytes, fixed macrophages. Dot, 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 in subcutaneous tissues. Alveolar cells, in the lungs. Formation of macrophages. Okay, we don't know the percentage, but know, know what is a macrophage, where do you find them? There's different organs. Skin, you know, spleen, liver, skin, bone marrow. So as you saw, all of them they have different names. For example, Kufar cells in the histiocytes. In the brain there are macrophages. So all of these are they are ready for for a fight and to engulf uh, uh, infection. Okay, what is the function of a blood? We say that it carries what oxygen, it fights infection. Also, it carries what certain important chemicals like what hormones, vitamins, 
okay, antibodies, heat. Also, it carries what? Heat. heat. Okay, heat is also carried in our body, in the blood, electrolytes and nourishment. So, blood has also the function of what? Carrying away materials from the... Uh, our tissues like carbon dioxide wastes are removed out from our tissues okay in this regard in the formation of uh, special the formation of blood is what we call what hematopoiesis yeah so hematopoiesis is what we call So when when red blood cells are being formed, it's called erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis. Okay. So this one is blood formation in general. And and this one is red blood cell formation. I'm not sure if we discussed last time, but there is a hormone that's produced by the kidneys. What is that hormone? Anyone who remembers that? It's called EPO. What does it mean? Erythropoietin. Erythropoietin. Especially this hormone, this, this, this is given as a drug or as a medication for patients on hemodialysis. Okay. Do you know patients on hemodialysis? Huh? Yeah. Well, what does it mean? Dialysis. What does it mean? Yeah. When patients are hemodialysis. Doing the impurities and things from blood. Huh? It's kidney. Yes. Yeah. The kidney. <laughs> kidney yeah. When they, they okay. So what will happen at that time, there is one thing that is that occurs in hemodialysis, that is what we call there is what we call anemia, which is usually they develop what? Anemia. Why do they develop anemia? Can you see? It's because of male multiple factors. Because they lose blood when they do hemodialysis, they lose what? Blood and they are deficient of what? Vitamin B12 and folic acid. Okay, because they are getting some drugs, medications like SE inhibitors. Okay? And because of bone, bone disorder, because there is a relationship between kidney and bones. Yes, because of calcium. So they, they will develop also bone problems. That leads to suppression of what? Red blood cell production. Okay, that also is one of the reasons. So all of this, okay, they give uh, contribution or they contribute uh, for what? Anemia in patients with renal failure and on during hemodialysis. So because of that, always patients with renal failure or on hemodialysis, they receive a medication called EPO. EPO. EPO is erythropoietin. Okay? And, and okay, they need to get that one, really. You know what it feels like. You've been studying hard in med school, but it's your classmate who keeps getting high. Welcome back to Medicosis Perfectionalis. Let's continue our talk on normocytic anemia. And today's topic will be anemia and chronic kidney disease. In the good old days, we used to call it kidney failure or chronic kidney failure. Now we call it chronic kidney disease because we do not like failure. Symptoms of anemia are the exact same thing. Tired, pale, headache, lazy, dizzy, short, short of breath, on exertion, angina. The signs will include stuff like murmur due to a hyperdynamic circulation 
and so forth. Here is your hematopoiesis slide. We start with... So what do you mean by hematopoiesis? The formation of what? Blood, okay. Look how, how they are being formed. There should be what? A stem cell. So you know stem cell? What the, did we discuss last time? Stem cells. Or these are the progenitor, huh? or they are called the, the pluripotential cell. That means these are the ones that are being what, differentiated and they will be changing into the different cells. Can you see? So that means the, from these stem cells, erythrocytes, red blood cells come. From these stem cells, white blood cells come. All of these are white blood cells. From these stem cells, which comes? Platelets come. From these stem cells, the, lymph, the lymphocytes come. So that is what we call hematopoiesis. So these are called pluri, pluri potential cells. That means those that have the potential to give birth to the new cells. Mm -hmm. the parent cell. Eh? The parent cell. Yes, the cells. Or they are stem cells. Okay. With stem cells and we go to RBCs. So in anemia, we having problem producing enough RBCs. All of these steps need something called EPO, erythropoietin, from your friend, the kidney. That's fine. And as you are well aware that MCV determine if the anemia is microcytic, normocytic, or macrocytic. Anemia related to chronic kidney disease. So, MCV is a test done, okay? It's called mean corpuscular volume. Mean corpuscular, that means what is the average red blood cell that you have in the blood? That's what it means. It's called MCV, mean corpuscular volume. So, okay, depending on that, you can have these values. And microcytic anemia, microcytic means what? The smallest will, the cells will be small in size. Usually that occurs in iron deficiency anemia, when someone is deficient in iron. Okay. So normocytic will be normal cell. Macrocytic, usually the cells will be what? Big. Bigger in size. Usually that can be because of vitamin B12 deficiency. This one is iron deficiency. The other one it can be. These two are usually the reason for, for anemia, iron deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency. This is normocytic, MCV 80 to 100 femto liters. Okay, but first I would like to answer the question of the previous video. In the last video on aplastic anemia, there was a question. The answer to the question will be... D. Phenytoin. Now, back to anemia and chronic kidney disease. As you know, the normocytic anemia where the MCV is 80 to 100 has three main causes. Blood loss, underproduction, overdestruction. Of course, the blood loss has to be acute. Underproduction has many causes. Any of chronic disease or iron deficiency, we have talked about them previously, each in a separate video. Aplastic anemia was discussed in the last video. Chronic renal failure or chronic kidney disease, that's today's topic. So let's jump in. What is aplastic anemia? Aplastic anemia is when the bone marrow is no more able to produce any kind of cells. It's totally aplastic. You know, it's aplastic, that means. It's, it's, that means it doesn't have the ability to produce what? Red blood cells. Okay, that, that's one, one, one part of, uh, well, one form of this. So, anemia in chronic kidney disease starts at stage 3 chronic kidney disease and is almost universal by stage 4. What are these stages of chronic kidney disease? They are stages depending on the GFR in the chronic kidney disease case. I've discussed them in a separate video called the five stages of chronic kidney disease based on GFR. Of course, GFR is very important. It's called glomerular filtration rate. Glomerular 